What's going on YouTube? This week's tutorial is a two month transformation on James. We're stripping down the sides and giving him a drop fade so that we can get a nice shape out of the contours. We're working with his natural texture on the top by cutting a square line, retaining length on the front and the crown, and adding contrast to the blend with a heavier transition. Follow along as this tutorial is split into five sections so you can mirror it easily. The foundation, the scissor cut, the fade, the blend, and finally refinement. Let's jump straight in with the foundation. We're gonna start with wet hair, so fully saturate it with your water spray and add your favorite cutting formula. Next up, we're gonna find the natural growth patterns and section accordingly. James has nothing out of the ordinary here, so we're simply gonna section him off into a horseshoe. From the crown to the temple, we're gonna take our first section. We're then replicating this for the other side. Both sections will be taken from the center of the crown in a horseshoe or U shape, and the rest of the hair on top can be clipped away. All right, so we're gonna start at the back of the head where we'll find the occipital bone. Pull the hair down to the occipital bone and hold your fingers with your knuckles tight against the head and start your block graduation. As we move around the head towards the sides, we're gonna make sure to stay in front of our section as we pivot around. At the sides, we're placing our comb flat against the head and where the head starts to naturally curve away, this is where we'll cut our guide. Replicate this for the other side before moving on to our top section. Okay, so we've just completed our block graduation. We're now moving on to cutting our exterior shape and this is where we'll be connecting the top to the foundation. Take a center profile line and comb the hair either side in the middle parting. Pull the hair down at zero elevation towards the ears and place your comb underneath to find your foundation cutting guide. Cut your guide until you reach the middle of the ear and then stop. You'll now use a slicing technique or a razor or cutthroat to blend the back into the front. We're now using a triangular cutting line, meaning we're progressively getting longer towards the front. This is so that we can retain length around the recession points to use as texture when it comes to our styling. Now take a center profile line, no wider than the width of your comb and set your guide. Each time we section, we're gonna clip the excess hair away so that it doesn't interfere with our cutting section. We're influencing a square shape, so we're starting from the apex and creating a straight vertical line from front to back. Pull up, create tension and cut to your first knuckle. Drop half of your cut section, pick up another half and follow the vertical line in the same fashion. Each time making sure to pull the hair up directly from the root, ensuring that we do not follow the curvature of the head as this would be a removal of weight. Once the center profile guide is complete, remove all clips and halve the cut section. This will act as your guide for the next. Now take a new section and put it into your previous. For example, the center profile line is panel number one, the next section will be two and so forth. With each new section, we're over directing it into the last. That means two into one, three into two and four into three. Over directing each panel gradually increases length and weight on the corners of the head, thus creating a square shape. Repeat this process left and right of the head before continuing on to your cross check. To cross check, we're going in the opposing direction. Take a horizontal section from the back of the head and look for any inconsistencies in your cutting line. Follow this down to the front of the head and then move on to the back section. For the back, we're going to take a section at the coronal area. To find this section, we're placing our comb at the apex and finding where the head starts to naturally curve off at the back. Pull the hair out square to the back of the head and find your shortest point. Using the same method as we did for the top, take vertical cutting lines and over direct each panel into the last. So that's the top section complete. We're now moving on to our blow dry. Now add some of your favorite pre-styling product. Here we're using Uppercut Deluxe Salt Spray. To style these curls, we're gonna use a hair dryer on a low speed, low heat setting and gently knead and disrupt the hair while scrunching your fingers. This will allow the hair to breathe without giving it too much volume, helping to pull out the natural texture. We're now gonna expand the shape and get a rough idea for the end result. Blow drying and styling before fading the sides benefits you by letting you adjust parts of your fade to match your finished look. If you start by first debulking the sides, you might find that you're missing hair in an essential place. We've left the fringe till last for a reason. When the hair's wet, it stretches, and that can make it super hard to judge length accurately. So cutting the fringe dry is true to length and you can get a much better representation of what the hair will look like. We're cutting the fringe with our K-Show razor by pulling the hair with good tension and ripping the hair to create a broken effect. Start middle and work your way left and right. That completes the scissor work for this section. We're now moving on to the sides where we'll be adding a drop fade and shape up. By using a drop fading method, we get to keep some length on the sideburn for a more prominent shape up 
which can make the fade look extra crispy. To find out how to drop fade and see the completed look, check out the next video where we'll cover all that and more. I'm CMC Barber and we've just completed the textured crop with curls.